Welcome to the tutorial on image transfers. Today I'm going to show you how to create awesome artworks using this technique. So first of all I'm just going to show you some examples. Um, in this example I've used a skull and you can see it just looks so fantastic in the work. Image transfers really can add a lot of uh, interest to your work, a lot of depth. Um, so for example, if you just build up all the background and then just use image transfers, you can create an absolutely fantastic artwork without having to be able to draw or paint um, realistically. So that's a skull as an example. Here's a moth that I've uh, transferred. There's also here's a torso that I've transferred, transferred as you can see as well as there's a B and once again back to some skulls uh, and a bit of a female torso as well. So as you can see you can get fantastic results. Now what I use mainly to do my work is uh, acid free cardstock. Now you can get these from most craft stores uh, that sort of thing and this is usually by a pack of, like this particular pack is called the Once Upon a Time Stack. Um, and there's 48 sheets in it. And they just come like this to start with. But they're acid free and I find that they work really well if they get a, a bit of liquid on them. Uh, so what I normally do is I just paint them over with gesso first. And then I'll just use my stencils or ex excess paint and just wipe over them. And slowly and surely you'll start to build up the surface. Um, so like when I'm using my stencils, um, what I do is with the excess on the stencils, I just stick them straight onto here and pull them off. And then after a while you start to build up all different layers just by using up your excess paint. And then you can come along with your image transfers and then put them straight onto the works. Okay, so what you're going to need for this technique, first of all, is uh, transparency film. Now this is inkjet photo quality transparency film. Uh, you have to check what type of printer you have because you might have a laser, so you'll have to get the, the right um, transparency paper according to what your printer is. But mine's an inkjet, so I use inkjet transparencies. Now, what's a transparency? Well, basically it's a clear sheet. But on one side, you'll actually feel it. It actually has a texture on it. Uh, and it's a bit rough, whereas the other side is very smooth. Uh, now, the rough side is what the ink sticks to. Because if you put it in wrong, and you try and print... Uh, a design onto the wrong side when it comes out of the printer it'll all run and you won't get a you won't get a, a fantastic image so make sure you always check that you're putting the image uh, the transparency film into the printer on the correct side to begin with so all you have to do is just print out your image onto your transparency film pretty straightforward it's always best to try and use your own images um, just be careful of copy, copyright and that sort of thing um, just if you're getting images from the internet, make sure you, that you, you alter them so that you make them your own um, because you don't want to be copying anybody else because um, you could find that you may get in some serious trouble down the line. Okay, so once you've transferred your image like so, you're going to have to decide where you're going to put it. So once you've found an artwork that you're going to use, and I'm just going to use <coughs> maybe just this one, this one here, and then I'm just going to line it up where I think it might might go, might look all right. Okay. So what you're also going to need is some sort of gel medium. In this case, I'm using a Winsor and Newton acrylic medium, heavy structural gel. This one has, this one is. But any sort of impasto gel works fantastic for this technique. Alright, so let's just begin this technique. Okay, so the first step that you need to do is to apply your impasto gel to your surface. 
Now it's important that you don't put it on too thick or too thin. So give the area a fairly decent coat. And I like to just keep going over for a bit to try and create an even covering with the glue. Um, obviously the more that you apply the longer it's going to take to dry so I sort of just keep working it over until it's sort of about that sort of consistency I find works pretty well. Then I take my image make sure that you're putting it down rough side um, first you don't want to be putting it down on the shiny side otherwise you won't be able to transfer your image and then it's just a matter of laying your image onto onto the paper and then using your finger begin rubbing your finger across the area of of the actual image and then I come back usually with my thumb and push a little bit harder because you want it to bond to the surface now what I find is if I put too much glue underneath the ink may begin to run a little bit um, but I don't particularly worry about that too much because because of the style of work I do I quite like that effect but that's, I'm just letting you know if you put too much glue then it'll run a little bit. So you just continue working it, pushing it, making sure you're removing all the air bubbles. Okay, so once it's pretty contacted to the surface, what I do is I just usually leave that now. Um, I may leave it for five minutes and then I'll come back again in five minutes and then do repeat the same process using my finger pushing it over the complete surface you know some people like to use spoons and other objects to push it but I find that that actually you'll actually probably destroy the image a little bit by using a really hard object I find that your fingers work the best because you, you know you can really feel you can really um, control the pressure and your finger isn't a hard object so it's not going to dent the image um, too much unless you push extremely hard so yeah so let that sit for about five minutes and then repeat the process and then again I'd leave it sit for another five minutes and then repeat the process again the longer you leave it dry, the better. The less chance you'll have of the image splitting, cracking or not coming off uh, as one complete image. Okay, so I've left this for about, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half. And um, what I've done now is I've just come back once more and pushed with my thumb. Really pressing a bit harder this time to help release the uh, image from the um, transparency paper. So now what I'll do is I'll start to curl it as much as I can and hopefully the image will come off. And just do it quite slowly. Like so. And like I said, the longer you leave it, the better chance you will have of actually getting a good result like that so it's pretty much completely off so that's the technique pretty simple pretty straightforward um, if you take your time and are patient you will get fantastic results so I wish you the best of luck Pardon me. Get up off of that thing and dance and you feel better. Get up off of that thing. Try to release that pressure.